we're going to be talking about circuit breaker finders, okay? And kind of, you know, there's a hundred different ones out there, but I'm going to talk about what you can get at the big box stores. Lowe's, Home Depot, and your electrical supply warehouses like Platt. Now, all these guys are available on Platt right now, and as of today, they're pretty close in the same price across the board, okay? So, we're going to kind of test the kind of the most popular, and then my favorite. So, we're going to start here with the Ideal 61-535, which is the most popular one right now. These are going for about $59, which is kind of cool because pretty much all of them right now go in that price. We have our uh, Milwaukee, and the Milwaukee is a 2222-20. Okay, so that's their, their version, their catalog number on that guy. Um, these can be found at Home Depot. Right now they're on sale for about 40 bucks. So, or uh, $49, sorry, $49 instead of 59 like you see in a lot of places. Then we have the Klein ET310. So this is where you're going to find it like Lowe's. So kind of the two competitors, Milwaukee and Klein right now. Milwaukee you're going to find at Home Depot. Klein you're going to find at Lowe's right now. And then you can pick the ideals up at your, um, your local plat. Okay, so this one right now is my favorite and is the most expensive, of course, which is the 61-5. 534 ideal circuit breaker finder. I've used this one for a long time, probably right around eight, nine years. Okay. These came out when they first came out, they were super expensive. They were about 180 bucks and they came out with some of the other versions here. Um, you can still find this one on their site for about a hundred dollars. If you can find them, I definitely recommend picking it up, but they all pretty much work the same. Now the way these work, is you have a receiver and a sending unit. Now all four of these units come with the circuit breaker tester. So what that allows you to be able to do is you have the, you're on a GFI, not a circuit breaker tester, sorry, GFI tester. So we have a GFI, we push the button and it trips the GFI, make sure the GFI is working. We go ahead and trip it back on. Even GFI plugs down the line is kind of nice. So if you want to see if this plug is GFI tested or protected, you can go ahead and hit it again and you'll see the main GFI works. So when you're dealing in a line of GFIs, they still work. Now, one thing on these, they're all basically the same. Don't get too much caught into this part. But uh, Jake was mentioning this too, is that gr two green lights on the ideals means good. Two yellow lights on the Milwaukee and the Klein means good. I didn't like that. I liked the green lights. The green light means good to me. Um, so that's kind of what I liked. Now here's the fun thing. If you have mix matched versions, so let's say you lose the plug-in version or you lose the tester here, and maybe you have a couple of them laying around, they all seem to work off either or. So I can plug one of these guys in and use any of the modules or any of the receivers, or I can take a receiver and put it with a with a different sending unit okay so just kind of there so they also all have the cheating the cheat sheet here that tells you whether the plugs wired properly or whether it's miswired or we have reversed you know neutral we are no neutral or reversed any of those kind of things they do not check for an open for a hot with no neutral that's kind of where you start running into the problem when you get wire coming in hot but nothing else that's what the digital ones do with the little screen on them. So, but it's kind of a cool feature to have laying around. Now this is our testing wall. So we're gonna kind of give you some tips on how to make them work. So what we found here is that while we've got it plugged in here, right next to us, and we're gonna run it across these three circuits. And you know, of course, the biggest thing we found as a tip is to make sure that your tester is in line with the breakers this way. If you flip it this way, it doesn't receive as well. So what you want to do is make sure you're facing here and that this flat spot on the front is flat against the breakers and we drag them across. Now we're going to go ahead, you have to turn them on, let them sync up, and then you're going to run them across the breakers once and then come back again while it sets itself and go again. 
So you can see here, goes off, that's not the right breaker. You're gonna come back, and this one goes off right at the breaker, okay? And we know that, because we do here, and we turn off the light, the noise goes out, and the lights on the actual sending units go out. So that makes it real easy to know that the, the system's dead. I'm gonna turn that guy back on. Now, um, this is the other ideal one that's real popular right now, like I said. All these guys run in the basically $50 to $60 range manner and where you're getting them at. Um, sometimes you can find these on sales for about 40 bucks on you know, eBay, things like this. This one has a couple extra features, which is cool. Um, you're gonna go ahead and hit the button, turn it on. You'll see, a, you'll see a green light pop up when it's ready to do circuit finding. If I hit the button again, it's a non-contact voltage detection, which means if I want to come up to the the actual circuit itself, it's gonna go off of all the circuits here because it's actually just checking to see if there's voltage, like your sniffer. So if you look, forgot your sniffer down in the box, whatever it is, it does have that extra feature, but you do have to remember to turn it back on to the other version and just hit the button once and it does that. One other feature this one has is the ability for it to be turned off the sound. So if I hit it, even when it's going off, and I know you guys can't see that. Let me see if I can flip it this way here. So you can see it's flashing, but there's no sound. So that might be a feature for some of you guys that work in big commercial hospitals, things like that. I don't like features like that. I figure my life is worth the noise. Uh, the other thing this one has, and actually all the, um, so the Ideal and the Milwaukee all have a flashlight on them. So you can actually turn on the flashlight here, same thing here. There's a flashlight on the bottom, kind of worthless to me, but whatever it is. And then push and hold. And they turn up. Push and hold, the battery turns off, beeps. Now, there's a couple other features that are kind of cool here in our other two versions, okay? So we've tested that one, works great. Um, the biggest thing I'll tell you if you have this one is making sure you are dead flat on there and then swiping it across. There will be a spot on the panel that as I run across, there will be a spot. Like see, I'm on the right breaker, but I'm a little off. You have to make sure you're dead center on the breaker to make sure it works. So sweeping it back and forth will help with that. Now, if you do get something like this where you sense that it's not catching, just hit the button again, hit it again, and reset again. Sometimes it will lose its connection. And all of them will do that. You know, again, push and hold. Now, um, this guy here is probably the slimmest, so it's kind of nice that way. I do like the fact that it's showing you the red here. So as we run across, it's going bright red. We know it's there. So we know when we're getting close, it kind of makes a, it's getting bright, louder, 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 and then going full blast, okay, to here. And then back to green as we pass over the next circuits. So, and these tend to really do good on re just keep passing by until you find it. Again, hit the button. You gotta hold it down to get rid of it. And another nice feature on both the Milwaukee and this is that you can store them in your truck put together. So both of them will do that. They'll sit there and have these guys set here. So, which one do I pick, okay? If I had to run to the store, uh, the Milwaukee one I like. I don't like that it's not as loud, but that may be really great to you. Um, if money's not an object, I always pick this guy. There's one massively huge problem that I hate with this one, and that is the switch here. This switch gets bumped on all the time. So a lot of times I put a piece of tape here just to keep it taped. So it won't turn on in my truck. That's probably the biggest problem I have with that. The other ones are all the push and hold buttons, which works way better, I will grant you. But for that little bit, I'd much rather make, make sure it works. So. If you guys have questions, please put them in the bottom. And as always, these videos are for review only and not intended as training. 
We're trying to help you guys kind of pick one out, but this is not training on how to use one. Get that done by your company or whatever facility, your school you're going to. They're the ones doing training. We're just doing reviews and helping you kind of pick some stuff out. We're not responsible for anything you do with them, okay? So as always, guys, have a great day. Like and share, and tell your friends. We'll see you later.